and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Warm Christian greetings to you all, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ across the world. My name is Billy Aleris Miranda. I was born and raised in Jamaica between St. Catherine and Kingston. Currently, I'm a student at Oakwood University doing a Bachelor of Arts in Ministerial Theology and a minor in Biblical Languages. I'm also the president of Jesus is the Way Prayer Ministry and an evangelist who preaches the gospel far and wide across the world. I want to say to every single person, we're living in a very serious time. Crime and violence have reached a place where it has created many pains in the hearts of young men and women across America and across the world today. I have a very interesting past, a past that will blow your mind to see what a young man could really experience in his early life just because of the one death of a family member. In 2005, the last child for my grandmother on my mother's side of the family, my aunt, Maria Celestine Fort, was shot and killed. She was killed, and when she was killed, we ran to the crime scene. We saw her in the pool of blood. It was a very frightening experience for me. At that time, I was just 12 years old in November. In 2005, when it happened, I had just started Old Abba High School in September of that year. I didn't know where to turn, because this was a shock to the entire family. I was so traumatized, I cried night after night because my aunt, she died to leave three kids, two girls and one boy. One will ask the question, how did my aunt, how did this happen? She was in a relationship, a very abusive relationship, and she should have gotten out of it early, but she stayed in that relationship with her children's father. He was very abusive, very obsessed. He would watch her, you know, sometimes go to a workplace, send, you know, death messages. They do all those crazy stuff. He sometimes come by the home where my grandmother was living, my aunt was living at my grandmother's house, and he would make fight there. It was a chaos relationship, back and forth abuse. And my aunt, in her, in her, lack of knowledge at the time but didn't seek the help she should she stayed in a relationship her mother said to her on her dying bed on the dying bed mar you need to leave this guy he's going to kill you i'll never forget after my grandmother went to the hospital in kingston public and we got the news she was killed she was she had died because my grandma she had cancer and when we heard she died, it really troubled our heart to know I've lost my grandma. After her death in 2000, you know, it was very devastating because when she died in the same period of time, she, matter of fact, my grandma died before my aunt was killed. She died in 2004. And in 2005, when my aunt left the relationship between this guy, and her, when they broke up, he started to send more death threats, saying to her, if you don't get back to me, with a relationship with me, I'm gonna kill you. What happened? The, the news came to us from credible sources in the community and both from law enforcement that he paid someone to have her killed. That experience was traumatizing for me. So for one year, and almost six months, I remember, I meditate on the death of my aunt so much. I cried night after night. And I said to myself, I must find some gangster friends. Because I need to take revenge. Because this guy 
who paid for my aunt to be killed. His life need to be ended. Not only did I say that at the time, I was concerned about the one who pulled the trigger. Who I, I heard who he was. So my ultimate goal is to get into gang life and take out these two persons. The question is, will I find any of those two persons I'm looking for? All I wanted is to take revenge. Blood was on my heart. Blood was in my mind. Blood was in my eyes. What do I mean by that? All surround my life was revenge. And I want to take revenge. And so my journey took a very dark chapter. And that dark chapter of my journey, it reached a place where I went to an area in Kingston where my godfather would bring, you know, bring me to karate class. And I learned karate. And I also volunteer went on my own to where a few boxers were training to learn the moves of boxing. At the same time, I went to an area in Odabo, a certain area in St. Catherine. And while I was there, I'll never forget what happened. I met a guy, he's a deceased now, TG. He was a, he was a member of a well-known gang. And just to let you know, today, I don't think we have three or four of them alive today from this gang. But at the time, it was plenty. And he told me, I said to him, TG, because when I went to spend holiday with my cousin in that certain part of St. Catherine, I always spend the weekends there and I spend like one and two public holidays there, both between there in St. Catherine and in Kingston. And as a result of that, when I was there in St. Catherine and I met the guy, he was not living far from where my cousin was that I stayed with. And, uh, you know, I used to smoke then as a young man. I used to smoke, you know, idle smoking. So I would go to the shops and that's where I met him. So I said to him, TG, I see you're a gangster. A man killed my aunt. I know the one who pulled the trigger. I know the one who pays the money. How can I get revenge? I need a firearm for myself. He said, we don't give firearms like that or lend firearms like that. You have to be a part of our gang. And when you become a part of our gang, then what I'm gonna do is allow you to get your own firearm. But you will have to go through a series of experience. And when you go through a series of experience, then in that case, you pass the test and we'll allow you to have your own firearm. So just to let you know, the world turned upside down because going to this gang was a very vicious, vicious, vicious gang. And these men, they're humans, but they have the heart of animals. And so what will happen to my young life at 13 years old as a young man? This was a very dark day, dark month, a dark year in the life of a 13 year old. Brothers and sisters, God has given each and every one of us a gift, a talent. Are we to ask somebody, can we exercise that talent? The answer is no. God has given it to you, you need to exercise it. Why are we waiting for somebody to tell us we can do this? I don't understand. If we're waiting for somebody to give us approval to do this, do you think it would be happening? It would not be happening, saints. 
So it's time to move forward. 